So I think to start off with, we've really got to think about the purpose of God with creation. And God's overriding purpose is to have fellowship with those that believe that he is and that he, that diligently seek God. God is a reward of those that diligently seek him. So in having that purpose, God understands that there will be that some that do not believe that he is and will not diligently seek him. So God's plan and God's purpose has to take into account human nature, the fact that people will reject him. So we can divide the ages of man into, uh, I think, four great epochs. The first is the fall. There was the time before the fall and the time after the fall. And now we know from the scriptures that before Adam and uh, Eve were even created, God understood and had in, a plan in, per, in, in place that involved the Lord Jesus Christ. So though it wasn't God's will that Adam and Eve should disobey, he understood that that would take place and therefore had built into his purpose uh, a change of direction. So his plan and his purpose is unchanging, but the directions things take uh, do change because of man's intransigence uh, in terms of following God. So when we come to the flood, we have another great epoch change, and then we perhaps can go to the crucifixion, the time when the corruption of the word of God by the Jewish people had reached a point that they crucified the Son of God. And that obviously ushered into the Gentile age that we're in now, and we're at the end of that age, and again, uh, the intransigence of men will cause the Lord Jesus to return to this earth to judge it and bring in another epoch, the, the kingdom age. So, so we have to understand the words in Genesis chapter 6 uh, with this in mind. We also have to understand what or how God interacts with his people and the world in general, I think. So just turn with me, first of all, to Jeremiah, uh, sorry, Isaiah and chapter 63. Now, Isaiah 63 is about the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you've got entwined together uh, the unity of purpose between the Lord Jesus Christ and God. And, in, and you go through and it's, it's quite difficult to unpick uh, quite who's been talked about. But it, in many ways, that's the point, that, that the purpose of God and the purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, were together. But we have a verse 9 that talks about how God feels when there are difficulties and trials. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. So God has an empathy with the trials and the tribulations of those that are his followers, and he also has a, a, a regard for those that are sinful. He, he looks on the earth and, and is unhappy with those that reject him. And so it's in that context that we really need to understand Genesis chapter 6 and verse 6. So in the authorised version, we're told that it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. So if we deal with the easier word first, grieved, uh, that means to have hurt or pain. It was painful for God to see the earth so full of wickedness. And of course it says he repented. The Hebrew is the word to sigh. And to sigh has the idea to, to breathe with emotion. In actual fact, that could be used in a good way and in a bad way. Noah, actually, is referred to as a comforter in verse 29 of the chapter before. He called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our, our, our work. And that's the same word in the Hebrew that we've got translated as repented in verse 6. So Noah was one that sighed and God was one that sighed. 
Now, if you think about it in a human context, you know, we might go to somebody who's, who's had a, a, something terrible happen, and we might go and we might comfort them, and we would sigh with them, wouldn't we? You know, we, we would perhaps put our arms around them and give them a hug, and, you know, we, we would sigh and say, this is, this is terrible, I, I'm, I, I'm empathetic with your suffering. But we might also be angry and have that same sort of uh, breathing with emotion. You know, we're, we're, we're cross because of something that's happened. And so this word can have a positive and a negative uh, context. So God sighed. He breathed with emotion when he saw the creation and he saw the state of it. God understands that sinfulness is contagious. Remember the verse that talks about, you know, that the Israel was so wicked that, you know, only even if Job, uh, as was uh, Job and uh, Daniel, isn't it, were there, you know, that they'd only save themselves. Because the wickedness is contagious and, and, it, and it crushes those that want to follow after God. And so God has to bring judgment upon the earth that the earth might be cleansed and, and the new roots, as it were, of those that will follow him uh, can flourish. And so it was that after that great judgment, then Noah comes out of the ark and, and the earth starts afresh. But it doesn't mean God enjoyed the judgment that had to take place. It was necessary to, to clear uh, the earth, as it were, for allow a fresh start. But it wasn't something that God was joyous at. But does that mean that God's purpose is changed? No, it doesn't. God's purpose still is there exactly the same as it was before the flood. In just as the way, same way that when the Jews crucified the Lord Jesus Christ, God sighed, as it were. He, he was sad at the rejection of him and his son by the people that should have been his. And God now, at the end of our age, sighs at the wickedness of the world because men and women have rejected him. But in his judgments, he brings about a fresh start. And of course, the kingdom age will be a fresh start when God's purpose will still be the same, but the method of inaction will be different.